You know, I don't have any special news or events going on today. How about you? What's on your mind? Today's video is going to be very casual, but I do want to talk and show a little bit about Quen 2.5 Omni, which is the new release from Alibaba Cloud's Quen family of models. And the cool thing about this model is that it kind of can do it all. It can understand video, it can understand audio, it can understand images, but on top of that, it can actually respond to you by speaking. Now, in the documentation and from what I have seen, there's not really a simple way to have a set Sesame, quote unquote, style conversational set up with this currently. However, this highlights really the direction that things are going, especially in the open source, which is very important for folks like myself who want to be able to run this stuff locally and have a near real time conversational assistant or whatever your purpose of using such a thing would be. So basically right now, what I have on my screen is not the GitHub repository like I normally start these videos, but it is just showing that this is a 150 line, very simple script. And like 20 of these lines are taken up by comments. Comments. So in such a small, small script right here, we actually have a conversational pipeline. Now, this is something interesting to me because I used to make robots. They were social robots. And in order to actually get a conversational approach, you had to have a bunch of different pieces to the puzzle. You had to have speech synthesis for text to speech. You had to have speech to text. So basically the reverse of that, when you speak to it, it transcribes, it puts it into text, sends it to an AI backend, and then takes the AI's response and then synthesizes that text response into speech and then speaks back to you. On top of that, you would need something like voice activity detection if you wanted it to work properly and not have to manually start and stop the conversation. Sorry if that was verbose, but basically that's something I've been playing with since before ChatGPT came out. So my first experience with that was GPT-3 and it was really quite interesting to be able to do that. But back then I used Microsoft Azure for all the speech stuff and I've probably rambled on, but back to the screen right here. Basically, if I press enter right here and then give it a time, so let's say four seconds. Hey, can you tell me what's up today? So basically what's happening right here, and again, this is going to be slow and there's too much latency here, but this is just a kind of future looking direction. And essentially what's going to happen is this model is handling everything here. It hears me. It un well, not much really. I'm just here to chat with you. You know, I don't have any special news or events going on today. How about you? What's on your mind? And we can see that basically, although there was kind of a delay and it's not necessarily sesame like where it's fast and very humanistic. I don't know if that's a term. The cool thing about this is right now, this is running on one single 24 gigabyte video card, which while still may not be totally accessible, the fact that this can all be run locally right now on one video card without needing any external access or many other external libraries to handle speech synthesis or whatever is fantastic. So basically, Basically, the way I have the script written right here is it is kind of mundane where you have to manually put in a lot of things such as initiating your voice and then also telling it how long you want it to record for. But let me just put in nine seconds. And basically all I'm going to do right now is just continue talking as I am in the video. And we're basically going to just go see how the model actually responds to this. So <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting to see. I feel like I'm a, like a a sports star on TV like, yeah, well, you know, it was a good oh, game. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting. I'm just here to chat with you too. So what's the topic you're thinking about? Okay, so that's interesting. And I'm just going to keep trying to speak with it. And you can change the voices and things like that. And honestly, the voice, this is my first time testing this model's voice. It is not bad at all. Can you tell me about the best GPU for local LLM? I think I got that in the five second duration. And again, this is something that was like vibe coded in two minutes. So there's no optimization done for speed or anything, but I just wanted to demonstrate this as something that can be done currently, even if it is a more basic level. Oh, <laughs> okay, so I ran out of memory and that can partially be attributed to this trying to keep a memory of the conversation, which obviously will grow the actual uh, memory that it's using as the conversation goes on and on. So something else to really quickly point out is the online web demo that is for this. And I'm running this right now and it's using about 17, 18 gigs of VRAM. But truth be told, I tried actually speaking to it in the online tab here. I was 
kind of a little bit confused about what exactly is going on here and the differentiator between online and offline. But for the purpose of right now, I think I will probably just try chatting with it just for a second to see how much VRAM it's actually going to be utilizing in this offline tab where I just actually chat with it through text. This is not my typical video where we kind of formally start and go through the actual repository and then take a look perhaps at the paper and then show how to install it. But I did just want to do something a bit more casual because I know a lot of folks have pretty much patiently been waiting for a model or architecture that will allow us to just do voice to voice with the model without needing to implement a bunch of additional libraries and dependencies and things like that. So if I hop back in here, I'm just going to go to offline and just send it a text message and say, hey, what's up? And obviously I misspelled that, but we'll just take a look at the VRAM utilization here, as I would assume it would be a bit lower than the audio one. There does say something here in the actual repository about disabling that and being able to save about two gigabytes of video RAM. So if you did want to play with this, I suppose for a non-video or audio experience, you could save a bit of VRAM. But even as I'm seeing it now, this probably is going to require a 24 gig card. So I am getting some errors here and it doesn't really seem like I'm going to have good luck with this web demo currently without probably doing a bit of troubleshooting and more competency and reading on my part. But I did just want to point out that that is also available. In addition to that, something that is quite interesting to me is the cookbooks here for more usage cases. Now these are all Jupyter notebooks, so you could actually just go and run these on a Google Collab instance or whatever it's called and play with this, which is very useful in terms of education and things like that. The one that was really quite interesting to me was the voice chatting notebook right here where you can kind of see that it gives a bit of a example of voice chat except instead of actual voice to voice where you speak it responds this is basically just giving it a pre-existing audio file and what they do here is they show voice chat example one which has an English audio uh, file for it to respond to and then chat example number two has a Chinese audio file for it to respond to so you can see the responses right there. This is again really quite interesting and I was unfortunately not really able to quickly find something to allow me to limit the maximum amount of tokens it responds with except for down here in the inference locally section where you can use VLLM to do it and then you could define the sampling parameters. However, this says the output of the model can only be text with VLLM so unfortunately for now, I don't know that I'm going to be able to really get it to um, concatenate its response and not out of memory when it is going to speak a long response. However, I guess for good measure, I do want to try the script again. However, I would like to try a different voice. So there was Chelsea, which is the one we heard right there. There is also Ethan. All right, so here's how to change the voice is right here. So we need to find SPK and see if it is defined at all. If it's not, then we will just manually define it and we will be able to change and try Ethan as Chelsea is just defined as default if SPK is not specifically mentioned in the code right there. So I will just go ahead and basically take a peek for that. Okay, and we can see that SPK is not defined right now so if we do spk equals and then ethan okay cool it was so if i save this then hypothetically when i run this script right here we will be able to hear ethan's voice as well and i will perhaps just put this script on uh, GitHub gist, which basically means if you follow all the instructions to download and run the model locally you can then hypothetically just kind of play with the script as well. There is also another web example that someone had made with a web interface where supposedly you can kind of chat with it voice to voice. I don't recall what it was called right now, but I will mention it before the conclusion of the video. So if I type right here and then five, I'll be able to hopefully speak with Ethan. Hey, Ethan, how you doing? <laughs> I don't know why. Don't ask. <laughs> we'll see. And again, this is kind of an early implementation, not optimized. It's not streaming at all. Hey, so. I'm doing okay, just a bit tired. How about you? What's been going on with you lately? That's actually quite good. And really, you could implement some form of, uh, oh, what is it called? I forget the word. I know who makes it. Voice activity, Solero, voice activity detection, VAD or something like that, so that you wouldn't have to manually type anything, and then you could just make this way cooler. But as a simple example, I figured this was good enough. 
So to conclude, the repository I was referring to that I saw some individual had made can be seen right here. It is called quen 25 underscore omni underscore chat. And just based off the picture right here, it seems like a cool little kind of voice to voice interface for this. So I have not actually tested this. It does seem like you need Docker and there's some pretty um, in-depth configuration options here. So I can't vouch for this, but based off of some of the other things I see here, it will probably work very well, but I haven't personally tested it, but I did want to just bring it to your attention as if this is something you do want to play with, it would probably be better off like building off of this or trying this first and foremost than my little 115 line vibe script, if you will. With that, <laughs> that is going to conclude this video. I have to say a couple of things. The voices are actually quite impressive, especially for a model that is all in one, I suppose you could say. I think they are very expressive and they're more similar to some of the state of the art things I've heard just in terms of expressiveness. I do believe I heard some breaths in between um, words and things of that sort. On top of that, this definitely just shows the direction that things are going in terms of being able to actually have local offline voice to voice at a relatively decent pace in terms of latency. Obviously, there are rumors that Meta is going to be coming out with Llama 4 soon, and people have spoken, obviously unfounded rumors, but that it may have a end to and conversational voice-to-voice -voice kind of behavior to it, which would be awesome. But just being able to see something like this, especially for someone like me who's been toying with this whole text-to-speech, speech-to-text pipeline for many years now, it is actually really cool to see something that simplifies the entire process and can be run locally and offline. So with that, that is going to conclude today's quick little tech demo, I suppose you could say. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And thanks for watching.